Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. In this tutorial, we'll be seeing how to use a free AI image generator to take these two images in front of us and create a composite. And for this, we will be using the open source stable diffusion image generator and the interface that we will be using will be Focus AI. So you'll be able to use everything for free. To get started, even though you can use stable diffusion locally on your computer, I would not recommend that since most people don't have a strong enough graphic card. So what you can do is I've given you the link to this page that you're seeing in front of you. You will just scroll down and we will basically be borrowing Google's processing power by using this option which says Google uh, Colab, so open in Colab. And once you hit this, you will just need to have a Google account. For this, that's the only requirement, it's completely free. You don't have to install anything, nothing at all. Once you see this page, just hit connect. And usually at this point, if you weren't signed into your Google account, it'll probably ask you to just sign in. If you already were, then you'll see a check mark once it's connected. And then all you have to do is just hit this play button and just hit this option that says run anyway. And now it's gonna take around two to three minutes, it's gonna download some things, install some things, and finally we're gonna get a URL for our generator, so let's wait for that. All right, so that took around five minutes, and if we just scroll down, what you have to look for is this, these two links. The first one says running on local URL, public URL. We click on the public URL, okay? And now you'll see the interface for focus come up. So you can see this looks pretty basic. You can type anything here, then hit generate and it's gonna start generating the images. However, for our purpose for creating this composite, we just won't be using text prompts. We will be using the image prompts here. So what we're gonna do first of all is we are going to hit image or input image rather. And then we can go to this option that says image prompt. And here we can upload multiple photographs. So we've got two images with us, the link to download these images as well as the links to all the tools that we will be seeing in this tutorial are given in the description. And we will be uploading both the images here. This we can now straight away upload, but for the second image, since we want her to ultimately come on this image, inside this image, we only need her and we don't need anything else. So we'll have to just remove the background. So let's start this process. First of all, let's upload the first image here. So the first image is here. Now before we upload this, we need to remove the background. And for this, we're just gonna do it through pixel cut AI background remover. So let's just go to that tool. So I've given the link to this page again in the description. Let's upload the second image here. And it's gonna start the process and hopefully you should be able to remove the background. So let's just wait for this. And you can see it's done the job. We're gonna hit download. And then we're gonna upload this image over here. So let's do that. All right, so now we've got both the images here. And now what we have to do is, we can't just simply hit generate, though you can. It's gonna try to uh, try its best to blend both the images, but I've just seen that when you write a prompt and you actually describe what you want, it just works in a much better way. We'll also be talking about some other points, but before that, we need the prompt here, okay? So now you can go ahead and type something like, um, full body portrait of a Vietnamese woman standing in a garden, something like that, that should also be fine. However, with all these AI image generators, the more detailed the prompt is, the better results you get. Now the question is, how can we generate a really detailed prompt for the blend of these two images? So we're gonna take the help of ChatGPT. So let's open up ChatGPT. And here what you can do is you can upload the images and generate the prompt for them and then kind of combine these prompts. So how we're gonna do that is, let's first of all upload the image by using this plus button here of the portrait. So this is the image with the background, not the one where we remove the background. And here what we can just say is that I need a prompt to create the attached image. Focus only on the woman. Okay, so we don't need any elements in the prompt which describe the background in this case because we don't uh, need it. And let's see the results here. All right, so you can see that we've got a pretty detailed prompt of this woman here. So we've got the first part done. Now let's upload that background image also. All right, so as I was doing that, I ran out of the free chat GPT limit that I had for attaching images, so I can't do that anymore. Okay, just be careful about that because they don't allow you to attach too many images, but you will be okay if you're just doing this for the first time. However, I just wanted to show you the process. So again, because I had done this before, so prompt to generate this image, only focus on the woman, and again, we had got this, and then after that, 
I had attached this image and I had just written something like, now I want you to analyze the next image and create a prompt for it in such a way that the last prompt we created for the Vietnamese woman combines with this prompt as the background. You can also, if you want to shorten this process, attach both the images together and just ask it to analyze to create a composite prompt for that. I've just seen the results for that are not as detailed as what you get when you do this separately. Because now if I show you the final result, you get a really detailed and long prompt which tries to create, create a composite between these two images. So however you do it, once you've got your prompt, we're going to head back to focus. And this is going to come here. So we can just pray, paste this uh, next to the generate uh, button here. But we're not going to hit generate because there are a couple of things that I want to show you. One is if you uh, just check this advanced button here, you're going to see this come up. And here there are a lot of options, but this is a basic tutorial. I just want to change one thing, which is the aspect ratio. So you can see aspect ratios here. And I want this similar to this image, like slightly taller like this, okay? And I've just seen, I've tried a lot of them. 14 by 17 works really well for what we're going for. So we're gonna select this one. Otherwise you can select the other ones also. So that is done. Another thing is, so this was one advanced option. There's also an advanced for these images, okay? So if you just hit this option here, you're gonna see certain sliders come up. These sliders, the main thing here is the weight slider or the image weight slider. This just means how much priority are we giving to this particular image. By default, you can see both the ones are set to 0.6. If we increase this, this just means in this final generated image, it'll be more similar to this one or to this one. It's not like if you can just simply increase the slider and hope for better results. No, I'm going to show you what happens when you push these towards the extreme also. Because what you'll realize is it's actually a balancing act they are competing with each other. So you're gonna see that later. Right now, we're gonna leave everything at the default because let's at least see what happens when, he just, when we just hit uh, generate. So you can see now I'll start the process. It's gonna take some time, so let's just wait for these results. All right, so you can see that our first generation is complete and this looks pretty good. Let's also just wait for the second one to get completed. Right, so this is the second generation and this time you can see the dress looks a bit different. Also, you'll notice that the pose is very different, right, from this original pose. We are soon gonna correct that also. I'm just, right now we're just focusing on the absolute uh, basics. Now, I just wanna show you what happens if first of all we increase, let's say, the weight parameter. So let's say I want this background to look more closer to this. So that's where I can say, you know what, take this to something like 0.9 or maybe even one, okay, something like this. And let's just see what differences are produced now. So this was the current generation. Let's hit generate again. All right, so our generations are almost complete. And this time you can clearly see that both the images that we've got here, they look, if you look at the background image here, they are much more closer. That's because it's giving more weight to them. Let's just see both the images. You can see this looks really nice. And so does this. Now, the best balance that I found with this image was when I used a weight, because this will be like a trial and error process. So I tried a lot and 0.8 for this and 0.7 for this gave me the best results. Okay, now I'm not gonna hit generate because again, we're just gonna get slightly better results with that. What I do wanna show you is uh, something that we've not seen till now, which is how do we change the pose to something like this, okay? There's just one change you need to make here, which is that under this image, you see these different options. Right now, by default, this is set to image prompt. However, if you select the next option that says pyrocanny, okay, this just means that uh, focus AI will just go through and notice the edges in this particular image. And then via this prompt, when it generates the image, it's gonna keep those edges similar to what it has in this image. Therefore, it's basically gonna copy the pose. And the moment I clicked on this, you can see that even the weight by default, it changed to one. So let's leave this at the default settings. And right now let's hit generate. All right, so you can see that our first image is getting generated and you can clearly see that it's trying to match that pose already. So if we just go down, you can see very similar pose. Let's just wait for this. All right, so we've got our first image ready. If you open this, you can see the pose looks really good. But if I open up this image, uh, she's wearing this sleeveless dress now, which is not similar to what we had. Uh, let's wait for the second generation here, because in case we don't get it here, I'll tell you one little solution to this. So even in our second generation, you can see that we have not got the desired dress. However, we are getting the desired pose. Now, one way is that you can change the prompt a bit. So write 
specifically that it's a full sleeve dress that can impact this. Another thing that you can do is remember just like the weight slider, we have one more slider which says stop at. And in a very simple way right now what you can think of it is like this. If you increase this slider, it's gonna incorporate more of the pixels. So right now it's incorporating only 50% of the pixels that were there in the original image, okay? Or 50% of the original image and the rest, we're kind of giving it uh, the liberty to change. So it has produced this sleeveless dress. However, if we, let's say, push this to something like 0.7, okay? Then we're telling it that no, you know, most of the pixels should be similar to this image. So right now, let's hit generate and let's see these new results. All right, so this time we've got these two generations. So to be frank, our proposed solution didn't really work. Okay, that happens all the time. Sometimes you can just need to generate more images, but then sometimes you just need to ask yourself, if we have done both these things, why is it still not giving preference to this image? And that's where you'll realize that, remember from our previous generations, we had increased this all the way almost to one, right? That means it's giving a lot of preference to this also. So what we can do in this case is, since we want it to pay more attention to uh, this particular image, we can just turn this down to let's say around like 0.7 or like something like this, okay? We're taking away the priority from this because that's how you have to play this game. It's a game of balance. And now let's try to see if reducing this gives more preference to these two sliders and produces something more similar to this. So let's wait for this. So again, for some reason, this also didn't work. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is the prompt method. So I'm gonna specifically mention here a full sleeve traditional Vietnamese uh, AOI. And now let's hit generate. All right, so finally it seems to be working for us because now you can see we've got this image. So let's just open this and you can see full sleeves, looks really nice, the pose is similar and a lot of elements from the original background image also. However, slightly different because we had slightly reduced this. So again, like I said, maybe in the next generation, we can increase it. But right now we are gonna move ahead with the next step after we've just seen which of these two images is better. So let's just wait for the generation of the second image. All right, so this is the first one and this is the second one. I think the first one looks better. So we are gonna hit download. And for the final time, I'm just going to increase the weight here and I'll directly show you the final results now. All right, so for one final time, what I did was I just made the weight all the way to one so that it looks more similar to the background here. I think this definitely is looking better. So let's wait for both the images. All right, so we've got our results and you can see both the images look much better now, much closer to the background uh, image here. You can see this is the first one, but she's got long hair, which we didn't have in the original image. So I think we're gonna stick to this one. I think this looks good, even though it has something else, like another person in the background, that's not a problem. Any of the editing softwares can remove that, even to be frank, focus can, but right now, we will shift our focus to two other things. One is that we're gonna improve the clarity in this image, make it even more photorealistic because it still has that little bit of an AI look, even though stable diffusion is pretty good, but the model we are using right now is a very basic one. So let's make it more realistic. And then finally, we are also gonna be doing a face swap. So in order to make the image more photorealistic, we're gonna be using Pencil AI. Once you register for Pencil AI, you get 20 credits for free. Then you can go over to Tools. And if you go down, you're gonna find this tool that says AI Detailer. We're gonna upload our generated image here. And here all you have to do is, you'll get two sliders. One is the resemblance slider. Make sure this is set to two. That means we're telling it, after you make it more photorealistic, don't change the outlines so that the pose and the other things don't change. And within the outlines, what should we do when it comes to the creativity? We want it to add more texture so it becomes more photorealistic, but not anything else. So I've seen the best results come somewhere at around 0.4. So resemblance, we are being very strict and in creativity, this side is you're being conservative. So less creative, that 0.4, it's good, okay? And let's hit generate and you're gonna see that this is gonna become more like a photograph now. All right, so we've got this result. It looks really good. The only thing is that it's changed the hat a bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit start over. And if something like this happens, just make it more conservative. So go to 0.3 and let's hit generate. So you can see this time the result looks much better. It's not really changed the shape of the hat. Just added something on top 
These things can be removed very easily. So I'll just show you how to remove this and this inside Photoshop very soon, but that's gonna be easy. What we are gonna do right now is, first of all, let's quickly compare this with the original generation. All right, so you can see that there's a lot of difference between both the images. This was the original. Just look at the flowers here. They just didn't look too real, but look at the flowers after running it through the AI detailer. And look at the texture on the ground, look at the texture on her dress, just looks much better. And I think this was already there, this issue, so that's not a problem that it's produced something like this. We'll quickly correct this and remove this person also. But before we do all these things, let's just put this through a face swap. So we're going to be using the Remaker AI free face swapping tool. We'll upload our pencil AI generated image here and just we'll just need a cropped headshot from the very original image so I've also provided you that let's upload both the images here all right so we're just going to hit swap all right we've got our image let's hit download and see how this looks and you can see now even the face looks very good the pose is similar let's quickly just take this inside photoshop and within a few seconds let's correct this issue and this issue all right, so we are inside Photoshop. We can quickly go over to the Remove tool. Just make this slightly small and brush on this part and select this. And then simply hit the check mark and let's wait for the results. And you can see that both those things have also gone. And finally, you can export this image. So in case this video helped you out, do give it a like. And if you want to follow along all the different experiments that I'm doing with the different AI tools when it comes to photo editing and image generation, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time.